Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to our second episode of Weekly Roundup. My name is Frankie. I'm Peter from Mr. Money TV. Yeah, and today we have very interesting news lined up for you guys. Okay, so before we go into that, just give me a few moments to thank our content collaborator, which is The Coffee Break. The Coffee Break is a newsletter that concise important news on a daily basis to a newsletter and send it to your email every single day, five days a week. And it only takes like three minutes to read. It's an easy read. Yeah, in fact, after I signed up for Coffee Break, I barely actually touched the newspaper, right? Hey, same as well. Yeah, because like they just concise everything for you and they made it really funny as well to read uh, and pick out all the interesting parts and it just takes you about three minutes to complete the whole news. Correct. And if you're interested to find out more about them, sign up in the link below. Okay, without wasting any more time, let's go straight into our first news. Peter, you invested in gold or not? Um, I invested in some paper gold uh, mm. but not physical gold. Do you know that in the US, you can buy gold from Costco? The supermarket. Oh, really? Costco? Correct. So in the past, this place is a supermarket where you buy your groceries and all that. But recently, they started to sell gold as well. Wow, I cannot imagine if let's say I were to walk into village grocer and then there's one row of gold bar there for me to Correct. choose from. But the point here is that the product is actually selling like hotcakes. Huh? Yes, people just snatching up the gold bar from Costco. I, I can't imagine people walking into village grocer or something, right? Hey, do you know I'm going to get some chicken, right? Then choose chicken, choose fish, choose veggie. And it's like, oh, there's gold bar there. Let me get one gold bar as well. Yeah, and some more one gold bar is like $1,900, you know. So I think people are worried about the value of their money. Wow. So they put their assets into gold today. And maybe that's why Costco saw that as a business opportunity. So they just offer that product for Ooh. the people out there. La. So Costco with that as well kind of have an inventory that will actually go up in value, right? That's number one. Oh yeah, talking about that. The balance sheet is going to look good. <laughs> yeah. And recently there's this news that could have shaken the world quite a bit. Oh, really? But it was stopped last minute. Wow, sounds exciting. Is this like a James Bond movie or something like that? Almost there. Almost there. So what happened was, thanks to some counter-terrorism efforts, apparently in Iran, there was supposed to be a major terrorist attack that planned for 30 explosions to go off at the same time simultaneously in the capital of Tehran. So imagine, 30 bombs simultaneously. Wow. How crazy could that be? It's probably going to make headlines in every newspaper around the world, man. That's right. I, I'm pretty sure if that goes out, the stock market is going to take a deep go. For sure, for sure. Yeah. But why do they do that? I have no idea. But basically, according to Intel, it says that um, they were actually just trying to create chaos and then instigate protests and then they want to you know, topple the government. That's the main thing, right? So... Anyway, at the end of the day, about 28 people were arrested and all these people were actually linked to ISIS. Wow, it's been a while since we heard about them. Huh? Maybe they thought that, uh, I've been quiet too long. <laughs> <laughs> it's time, time to make some move, right? Okay, we shouldn't laugh move. about it. Okay, yeah, 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 it's yeah. pretty Serious scary. Topic, right? yeah. Okay, let's move on to our next news. Now, we all know that the property in China is not doing very well, right? And the biggest problem in China right now is this company called Evergrande. Mm -hmm. I've made a video about that before. I'm not sure whether you remember. Yes, I remember Evergrande. It caused such a big hoo-ha during that time, right? And then there were like so many people queuing outside there demanding the CEO to come out and then the shareholders. Big hoo-ha. And then caused, led to a whole China real estate crash, right? Yeah. Okay, so just to give you guys a little bit of context, right? So what Evergrande did was they, they have a piece of land, so they sold properties, but instead of using the money to build the properties, they took the money, they go to the bank to borrow more money to buy a new piece of land and started selling again. So this process repeat over and over again at, and it come to a point whereby they have too many projects to handle and they cannot deliver. So that's why there was a long queue, people demanding where's my house and whatnot. Yep. It was such a poor thing because people still had to pay for the house. Correct, correct. And because of that issue, they went into financial problem and things like that. So at the end of the day, the stock market just say, I'm going to suspend your trading. So that happened in March last year and the suspension was all the way until August this year before they reopened for trading again. Reopened for trading again recently. Correct. And you know what happened, lah, right? People waited for so long to sell. When you open for trading again, obviously it's going to go down again, right? And right now, when they reported their latest earnings, it was bad. Evergrande reported a loss attributed to shareholders of 33 billion yuan, which is 4.1 billion US dollar, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in one quarter itself. What? One, one so quarter itself? One quarter itself, they lost this much well, of you're, money. You're losing a nation's wealth just in one quarter. 
So as a result of that, obviously investors are going to be very panicked and they started selling again. So the stock market decided to say, whoa, 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 you guys, please calm down. I'm going to suspend, suspend it, it again. Suspend <laughs> it again. You guys calm down first, then only I think what I want to do. So that has been the headline for Evergrande this week where, you know, stock suspension again. So if, if a company goes into such situation, what are the things that they can do moving ahead then? Well, Evergrande is supposed to meet up with their creditors, right? Because they, they borrowed a lot of money in the past. They're supposed to meet up with the creditors to come up with a plan to say how they can restructure the deal. But unfortunately, one of their subsidiary is under investigation right now. Ooh. So as you know, right? When a subsidiary is under investigation, um, a lot of time authorities won't allow you to do a lot of things because it would mess things up. So during this time, their restructuring plan also Oh, hang, can't toy, la. Can't cannot toy, restructure la. There, yeah, you cannot issue new notes, you cannot do anything, you can do any corporate exercise, you can just Correct. wait. Yeah, so they hit a critical roadblock right here and now the main problem now is the survival of the company. Right, Hopefully right. this company will be there. There was this, there, I still remember there was this whole story about like how if Evergrande were to totally collapse, there's going to be a lot of other banks that's going to be involved, yeah. including International Bank. In fact, there was some International Bank that actually lent to them a lot of money, right? Yeah, $20 billion if I'm not mistaken. Oh, if you want to find out what banks to avoid, make sure you go and check out the lease. Or what lease? <laughs> the Evergrande creditor lease. <laughs> Since we're on the topic of housing, I think there's one headline that we should pay attention to. The Perak State Government recently announced a 308 million ringgit housing project in the state of Perak, covering three locations. And these three locations that we are talking about is Manjoy in Tambun, yeah, Changkat Jong in Teluk Intan, and Kota Tampan in Lengong. Now, when you hear these three areas, Frankie, hmm. Is there anything that came into your mind immediately? Yeah, the sensitive word here is Tambun. Because Ooh. our Prime Minister constituency is in Tambun itself. So I suppose this 308 million uh, ringgit project is partly is to benefit our Prime Minister's constituency punya uh, residents lah, so that everyone there is happy and hopefully maybe GE16 they will they will give him the support again. Ah, uh, um, no lah, these are speculations. Speculations, huh? we do not correct. know. Yeah. Nonetheless, this project will take about 24 months to 36 months to complete, which is about three years' time. So at the end of it, it's gonna be ngam ngam ho about GE16 time. We have to say, if the government is doing a good job, they deserve to be re-elected, right? Yeah. So anyway, at the end of the day, there's nothing to shout about. We just hope that our government don't just have PPR in Perak. La. Announced in other places as well. I mean, for example, like Selangor, also quite packed. What? Oh, there's a lot of people here. Johor, huh? Correct. Yeah, maybe they need Actually, PPR? many other states also require PPR as well. Mm. Not just Perak only, right? So hopefully, government can do something about it. So since we are in the topic of politics, right? Do you recall in the last state election, there was also one parliamentary seat by election? It was in Kuala Trangganu. Mm, yeah, right. yeah, the bribery one, right? The bribery case. So that fella was um, being alleged of involving into bribery cases. So his seat was being nullified. So they had a by election. The result was that was that they win again. They win again. So PN won it again. Correct. Even without. Bribery or whatsoever. Yeah. So recently, the election court suddenly invalidated PN's victory now in Kermanman, also in Trangganu State. Oh, Kermanman coffee. Kermanman punya parliamentary seat during GE15, also citing Barbary cases. Oh, yeah. yeah. As I was reading about it, they say that actually they found that there was some payment made from I Belia, I Siswa Aid to aid the people which is constituted as bribery. But here's the question, right? Mm. What makes bribery bribery? So, if you give cash straight away, there's bribery, la, right? But if it's under part of a development fund or something like that, allocation, is it really constituted as bribery? Uh, not too sure because during the state election, our Deputy Prime Minister, Zahid, he went down to Dungun in Trangganu and he announced that he was giving 250,000 grant to Trangganu Malaysia Youth Council. He also announced 200,000 to motorcycles team throughout the state and 100,000 to the Central Trangganu Development Authority Youth Association. So if you think about it, right, all this money also came from government initiatives to help the people. Ma. It's just that the timing ngam ngam is during that time, so people sometimes just bring it up and and yeah. pouring it into a news and say that, hey, why? how can you use public funds to fund all this kind That's of right. initiative? Yeah. Yeah. So now the question is that, 
Is it double standard ke? Or is it really? Well, this is for the court to decide. But for us, I think we just need to accept that because there is this kind of cases going on, you know, the result is nullified. So no choice as a rakyat. We have to go back to by election and re-elect our representative of uh, people. Lah. Okay, but nonetheless, I think that at the end of the day, even with the by-election, well, probably they are not that afraid lah, because the last round when there was a by-election, PN still won back, right? So, yes. not much of difference. Alright, unless PH has a really strong candidate that can go against the past candidate, but you know, Trangganu is always a strong state for past and PN. So, we will, we will just see about it. Right? But having said that, right, to a certain extent, I think better just don't kacau it, leave it be, you know? Especially if you kacau it already and then by-election... You still lose, ah? Huh? Hmm. Memalukan sial. Recently, we have a headline news about corruption, which is Razi Jidin, a former Paul Sack of the Ministry of Education, yeah, and currently a businessman, is being nabbed by MACC, right? So apparently, yeah, it was in related to this 80 million ringgit project involving printing of books via direct negotiation. Oh, the Prime Minister already said many, many times going forward, as long as he is the Prime Minister, he does not allow a direct negotiation. Unless it has to do with national security, right? Correct. Yeah, so, well, that is uh, very daring of him. So, you know, in Malaysia court, you are not guilty until you are proven guilty. So, at this point, investigation is still going on. So, Razi still has a chance to prove himself innocent, right? Yep, that's uh, right. But next time, you know, if somebody invites you to go into a direct negotiation, you know, mm. be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Be, be very careful. careful. Okay, so we talk a lot about politics, about economics, and things like that, right? Before we go off, I want to talk a little bit about the stock market because mm. I picked up something interesting over there. Yeah, after all this uh, FAQ show, right? It's supposed to be all about business and investment. Yes, correct. So I was doing a little bit of digging, right? And I noticed that since May this year, the founder of My News, uh, which is CEO Dang Tai Lok, uh, he was slowly increasing his stake in the company. Right, he bought more than 2 million shares at around 46 cents a piece mm-hmm. to 58.87% stake currently. Oh, that's very high. Yeah, almost two-thirds of the company. Right? And coincidentally, during this period of time, My News also announced that it planned to raise 29.33 million ringgit via a private placement involving the issuance of 68.2 million shares. Now, if you think about it, right, 29.33 million ringgit over 68.2 million shares each share is about 43 cents. Okay. Then I started to have this question. If the CEO and the founder of My News is able to buy the power placement at 43 cents, why did he buy it from the open market at 46 cents? Eh? Yeah, because well, you could have just get the private placement, right? Correct. So apparently, this private placement was to be given to a strategic investor. And this strategic investor is JAG Capital. Now, do you know who owns JAG Capital? Uh, nope. Okay, JAG stands for Johari Abdul Ghani. Oh! oh Dato Sri Johari's Punya Private Investment Company. Wow. Yes. I think there was a day I went and played golf, I saw him. Oh, really? Mm. Wow. See? Atas Punya Orang. Okay, wait. That's why we play golf. Yeah. But anyways, since JAG Capital bought the shares, my new share price just steadily going up, going up lah. Right? Hey, but... What's the point of him buying my news? Ah, so a lot of people thought that it is, it is just another investment of JAG Capital. But from that point onwards, until recently, no news from my news. So until this week, finally something happened on my news, right? Okay. The executive chairman of my news, which is Mr. Deng Lian Bing, he suddenly announced that he's going to resign from the company as executive chairman. And his reason was, he already fulfilled the objective of helping the company to streamline the business for post-COVID recovery. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. But, but, but why finish already need to quit? Correct. So that is question number one. And number two is, all these years, this guy has been the top management. That's right. And then suddenly, when you have a new strategic investor come in, then you suddenly say you're going to resign. So that is the part that I don't understand. But the speculation here is that if somebody from JAG Capital were to assume that role, then probably he's going to bring some changes to the group, right? Right. Or anyone who comes to this new position will have the power to actually change the direction of the company. So now the question would be, how can this new management is going to drive my news to a new height? 
Okay, so what does JAG actually do? So JAG Capital has a couple of businesses. One of it is called CI Holdings. This company sells all the, you know, the one kg cooking oil where all the mama like to buy and use one. Oh, subsidized subsidized yes, yes, cooking yes, oil. Yeah. That is one of the business. And the other business uh, JAG Capital has is called KUB Malaysia Berhad. This company a little bit more diversified. Okay, so they sell the Gaston they also do some agricultural businesses. They are also involved in ICT infrastructure, property right. management, and right. a lot of a lot of business, everything businesses. Is. Everything lah, basically. So if you want to tie this two entity together, then maybe you can say that moving forward, my news can leverage on KUB's Malaysia's property to open new stores. Oh and yeah, then, that's true. And then maybe at the same time, you know, then my news can also feature distribute all the some of the products that correct, they own, like correct. the one kg packet oil. Correct. But all this is just speculation. It's just my guess of what could happen to my news going forward. Mm. So none of this consists of investment advice. Mm. Uh, it is just purely us thinking and imagining things. Yeah. So it's not real. Correct. It's for entertainment purpose only. Alright, these are some of the most interesting headlines that we find for last week. For those of you who want to keep yourself updated with the latest headlines, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter of The Coffee Break. Go to the link in the description below and sign up for it. Then, every morning, they will be sending you a quick read that is just 3 minutes for you to find out all the necessary news of the day. And finally, if you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and share it with your friends. Hopefully, we will see you guys in our next video. Yep, that's right. So, see you guys.